This introducing the center. So all uh, the algebra is unless otherwise stated will be finite dimensional. Uh, uh, let K be an algebra equal to field. Uh, here is the first uh, exercise for those who are interested in this. 
so uh, suppose uh, P is uh, bigger than 2. Uh, so there are now in characteristic P case and I was SL to K. Uh, and then the problem is show that uh, the center of the small size and work is going to be And there will be more material, so uh, later on you'll see that there is a way to approach it. And also there are some things uh, on the web, uh, here, some cheats in the web. But one has to look at. <coughs> so, um, <coughs> now let me uh, discuss uh, restricted Lie algebra. Uh, well, these constitute a very uh, natural and important class uh, of the algebras of characteristic P, so I suppose uh, the characteristic is, uh, is bigger uh, than zero in prime. And then uh, we say L is restricted. Here there is a map, uh, there is a piece power map. Uh, which is user denoted like this uh, from L to itself, which has the following uh, properties. Uh, so, first of all, lambda x to t is uh, lambda p x to this power. The lambda is in the base field and x is in L. Um, most important property is that uh, add x uh, to the power p. Which in characteristic P is a derivation of the algebra L. Uh, it should be part of, of this element. So this power of the derivation must be an inner derivation. And the third uh, property is uh, it's called Jacobson's formula sometimes. Uh, so it tells you how to relate the sum of this. It will be S to the P plus Y to the P plus um, some side x y and i runs from 1 to p minus 1. And now I need to specify this uh, si uh, where si is uh, determined by the following uh, We have a parameter t uh, and then we apply it to x and when we expand everything as powers of t, then we will get summation uh, i si x y t to the i minus 1. So si can be determined uh, from this formula. Uh, Um, so uh, the piece power map in, in general is, is not unique. Uh, so if, uh, if say we have uh, P1 and P2, uh, if they are if the P1 and P2 are two uh, piece power maps. Then uh, and the difference and the map. Sorry? Larger. No. No. Oh, okay. Yes. I'll try. Uh, then we can define a map uh, P of x given by uh, x to the p 1 minus x to the p 2. Uh, so this map uh, always belongs to the center of L and uh, is uh, is p linear, is p linear. Which means it is a linear map and uh, it has a property of phi of lambda x is lambda to the p phi of x. So, uh, and mm -hmm. conversely, uh, for any such file, uh, 
we are paying a uh, uh, new uh, this power map. Just by twisting the old one uh, by, by by adding this component, uh, by setting P5 is equal to uh, the old one plus 5. So this uh, this explains uh, how to construct this power map. Uh, <coughs> so uh, for uh, uh, for L to be restricted, well, it is necessary and sufficient that it is sufficient that every uh, uh, every derivation. Uh, the key is in uh, <coughs> So uh, not all uh, finite dimensional simple algebras are uh, restricted. In fact, the majority of them are not. And uh, they come in, uh, in families depending on some discrete and continuous parameters. And only the smallest member of each family is restricted and the other ones are not. Of course, the algebra of so the larger groups is sort of themselves form of any. Now, uh, some early uh, algebras form uh, uh, are restricted in a canonical way. So, for example, if you have a parallel with GLB, uh, where V is uh, a finite dimensional vector space over K, uh, over, uh, over K then this mark which sends x to the ordinary associated with uh, this power on GLV gives the restriction. So this is a this power mark. I could say a canonical this power map because GLV has this one dimensional center and you can always twist the this power map by adding this L. So it's not unique, but this one is of course better than the other ones. So another example, which is, will be very important uh, later on. So suppose uh, G is a real algebra of an algebraic group. So G is algebraic. Uh, okay. uh, in this case, uh, the real algebra G has a canonical uh, piece bar structure. So G identifies. Uh, this uh, the subalgebra of 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 all derivations of the coordinate of G uh, of all the so-called left invariant derivations. Left invariant derivations and uh, as a Lie algebra. So and since uh, uh, piece power of a derivation is again a derivation, so we obtain a canonical piece power structure on G. So this gives, uh, so Z goes to the piece power of G to the P, is a canonical piece power of G to the P. Is the dimension of your G uh, the same as the dimension of the group? Right? It's equal to G. Is it? Yes. Um, <coughs> now, um, so in general, uh, uh, from the from result of the flow, uh, which is still on the board, uh, it follows. Uh, there are examples where, in characteristic zero, where the center is infinitely generated. So it's not an Assyrian algebra. So uh, if you combine this result of the flow, this uh, result of Nagata, you will find examples where in characteristic zero, the center is not finitely generated. In characteristic P, there is no such uh, problem because we have uh, the P center. So uh, maybe let's call it 1.3. Yes. So um, the P center. So uh, for every uh, uh, 
uh, Prevex and L. L is a restricted the algebra. Uh, the element uh, x to the p, which is a p power in the envelope algebra minus this element in L, uh, is in, in the center. This is in the center of uh, which follows from uh, what is often called uh, freshman's uh, binomial uh, formula and characteristic P. Essentially, uh, that's uh, the reason uh, for that. And, and moreover, uh, by the PVW theorem, U uh, <coughs> of L is uh, is a free uh, module of rank P to the M, or maybe P to the national power, over the P center, which I'm going to, to denote the P of L. And that's the subalgebra generated by all these elements. Uh, so also, uh, it follows from the W theorem uh, uh, that um, the P center is a polynomial algebra in dimension of a uh, variable. It is a polynomial algebra uh, in fact in the following variables, the I to the p minus vi to the p power, uh, where where vi is, is a basis uh, is a basis of that. So uh, now we have <coughs> we have this uh, structure. <clears throat> so this, this implies that uh, uh, U of L is, uh, since it's finally generated, even free, is an inferior that P of L module. And that P of L is an inferior, so hence, so it's, uh, it's sub-module Z of L. So this implies, in particular, in particular, this implies that this algebra is affine, so it's finitely generated. Uh, finitely generated. Uh, right. Um, so, <coughs> so we now uh, there are also. I should mention that uh, Z of L uh, is a domain. Because uh, U of L is, uh, and then we define purely Z L to be uh, the maximal spectrum of that thing. The maximal spectrum of uh, Z of L. This is an irreducible uh, affine variety. Uh, it is used to find uh, variety. And it is called the Tussin House variety. Uh, because Tussin House was the first uh, who studied it and proved an important result about it, which I hope I will prove today. Tussin uh, House variety. Okay. And its dimension is equal to dimension of the L. Yes, its uh, its dimension is equal to uh, dimension of L because uh, it is actually a finite module over over that P of L, and dimension of the P of L is equal to dimension of L. 
Um, so I will also need uh, some extensions of, uh, of enveloping algebra. So we define uh, uh, what is sometimes called the Lee field. Uh, we define K of uh, L to be the field of fractions, the skew field of fractions of U of L, which in characteristic zero uh, is a bit uh, awkward to define, but in characteristic key, it's just uh, the following thing. We, we take U of L dependent it over the center uh, of L uh, over its field of fractions Q of L. So where Q of L is, um, is the field of fractions of, of the center. So this is uh, a finite dimensional uh, algebra Final dimensional algebra over Q of L. But uh, unfortunately, we don't know its dimension, which is very, would be very important to know in general. So uh, now we want to uh, estimate the, the dimension of this algebra. So, um, first of all, uh, since uh, U of L is a finite with P of L module. Just because of that, we can write uh, for every alpha in, a, uh, in this field here, we have uh, some alpha to the power m plus some uh, uh, yi alpha to the power i from 0 up to n minus 1, where alpha, for some y i in q p of l. And q p of l is the field of fraction of, of the p center. So that q p of l is, is the field of fraction of this polynomial in uh, z p of l. So um, this actually uh, helps us to visualize elements in this way. It's just a number. <coughs> well, because well, since it's finite, uh, it, it, since it's a finite module, and it will become a finite dimensional vector space when we extend scalars, and therefore, well, infinitely many of those well, linear dependence, and so you have some. Uh, so, so do you um, mean it's equal to zero or? Uh, 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 I run from zero up to m minus one. No, 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 but it's it's easy. Easy. I mean, this is not an equation. It's just yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, yes. Oh, oh, oh. So this should be equal to zero. It's just a linear dependence. Or okay. Something. Yes. So, but uh, well, if 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 some of these coefficients are zero, we can actually cancel them because we have a domain. So therefore, the free term will be some elements in Q P of L here, and so this implies that. Uh, uh, so we can actually arrange uh, uh, elements in, KF, in KFL in such a way uh, that all denominators come from this field, but not from the bigger field. So, so this implies uh, that so every, every alpha in this uh, leaf field has form uh, is form alpha is equal to Z inverse of A. Or, uh, or Z in uh, Z P of uh, cross, so of course it has to be non zero and A in U of L. So, although the terms are over QP, but we can actually uh, arrange this denominator to be in Z P of L. Okay. <coughs> now, uh, so here comes. Uh, uh, something uh, which we still don't know, and it has to do with the conjecture which was posed by Katz and Weisfather in 1972, uh, which is uh, sort of uh, now referred to as KW1. But this still in general. KW1 conjecture is after uh, Katz and Weisfather. Thank you. 
So there are two conjectures in this paper. Well, one is proved by the third one. The second one is proved by the first one. It's just very general. Uh, it's, uh, it's still open. So, um, no, uh, well, the first we need to know uh, how to compute. Uh, before I even state this conjecture, we need to know uh, what is the dimension of, uh, of, this, uh, of this algebra over the center. So uh, what we do know, and so since the U of L is a free, is a free ZPL module, then we of course know the dimension of K of L uh, as a vector space over QP of L. So this is no problem. Uh, but, uh, so in this case, it's just it's going to be P to the equal P to the power M. So this thing we know. Uh, so okay then. Um, then we can uh, compute the dimension of, uh, let me change the notation slightly, so dimension of P of L over Q P of L, which we do know is a P to the N, uh, can be written down as a product of dimensions. So first we take dimension of this algebra over, over its center, so Q of L, and then we take a basis of Q of L but uh, over that uh, subfield, and that will give us another one. So uh, the degree of uh, of this field. Yeah. So um, so this implies uh, uh, so both uh, these dimensions and uh, and this one. Uh, powers of P. <coughs> so, okay, um, we also know, uh, because U of L is, uh, is a domain, uh, so the argument is this alpha that I wrote on the board, uh, shows rather quickly uh, that um, K of L is a central division algebra to the central division algebra. Um, over Q of L, and Q of L is, uh, is the center in this case. So therefore, um, uh, we know that the dimension of a division algebra is a square. So therefore, we can write that this thing uh, uh, is equal to p to the power of some n of 2n. Two, two so this number is a square, and, uh, and so we also write we also write uh, the degree of this extension as p to the r. Of L over to P of L, let it be uh, P to the R for some R. Uh, then we have uh, the following formula, so N is going to be equal to 2N plus R. Uh, which well, doesn't really tell us much because we don't know what this R is still. And then if we know what R is still, then we will also know what N is. But at the moment, it's a, it's a mystery. And here comes uh, this uh, conjecture. Mm. So, um, so L acts on, uh, on its dual space, on the space of all linear functions, 
uh, on how we are core joint representation. Uh, so, for computing the center, core joint representation is much more important than the joint representation. And so, given uh, a linear, a linear function psi and L, we, we let L psi be the stabilizer of psi. Uh, so, it consists of all x and L such that psi vanishes on this subspace, that's exactly that. So all linear functions which, uh, which range on the image of hard x. Uh, <coughs> sorry, all x which vanish on, uh, on this thing. So this is uh, uh, it's an exercise. Well, of course, it's very easy, but uh, for those who are not familiar with this thing, so no psi is a restricted, is a restricted uh, least subalgebra. Of a restricted subalgebra means it's a subalgebra close to under this power of even for the mesh. Of even for the mesh. Uh, in, uh, yeah. So um, now we define the index. Uh, the index of L is defined as follows. It's uh, the minimal dimension of this stabilizer where psi runs. Uh, over all linear functions uh, on it. Uh, <coughs> if uh, the index of L is zero, which can happen for some L, and L is called Fabinius. Uh, so, um, and that's another exercise where there exists a the risk open subset. Subset W in L star such that uh, well, psi belongs to W if and only if dimension of the stabilizer is equal to the index. And an algebra is called, some people call an algebra uh, non-degenerate if this uh, risk open subset is not to be. So, that L is called sometimes uh, non-degenerate. Uh, if L, when we subtract W, that is this a risky open subset as uh, co-dimension bigger than or equal to 2. For real algebra, so if it approach, this is the case. Uh, but there may be some exceptional cases. Well, just to, to show you that you might, might expect some problems when P is bad for the real algebra on how it degenerates. So if, uh, uh, so if well, maybe it's a, uh, just a question, is uh, SL2 non degenerate when, when P is equal to just an average time? Um, but of course, this sort of uh, behavior is, uh, uh, is bad, and uh, you, you don't expect to happen very often. Um, now I can uh, formulate uh, the okay, uh, W1 conjecture. Um, uh, 
the KW1 conjecture states that uh, for, uh, for any uh, finite dimensional restricted uh, real algebra, uh, one has that uh, this number R here uh, is equal to index. Is equal to index. So uh, this implies conjecturally that uh, the dimension of the Lie field over the field of fractions of the center will be equal to P e to the power uh, dimension of L minus index of L divided by P. And um, well, in general, this is, uh, seems to be out of reach and it's a uh, well, very difficult problem. It is difficult even if one is willing to throw in uh, a classification theorem of uh, finite dimensional simple Lie algebras because the reduction to the semi-simple case is problematic as well. But for simple it is uh, not For simple Lie algebras is uh, not known. <laughs> it is known, of course, for Lie algebras of the reductive groups, so that, that I'm going to, to state now. So the first general result was uh, on this conjecture was proved by Milner, who was a PhD student of uh, Shafarevich, I think that that was in the late 70s. And then he also claimed that uh, he knew the proof uh, in general, but that proof turned out to be unreadable. And one year mark was, uh, well, was called, there was a counterexample found by Wilson. So in general, the uh, problem is, uh, is open, but there is a uh, another general result. So before I state it, let me give you a definition. So a restricted subalgebra, a restricted subalgebra, um, H of L is called toral or torus or torus uh, if um, if the piece power map on H is one to one. If the map X of P is one to one on H. Now, since our base field is algebraically close, this implies automatically that H is abelian. So this implies that H is abelian okay. and consists of semi simple elements, uh, which I did not define, but... Uh, uh -huh. You're sure the exponent is divided by 2? Which exponent? In the conjecture. Uh, Upstairs. Yeah. Oh no, oh, did I say, oh right, no, if, since it's, uh, no, no, thank you. There was a reason I divided by two, but in this case, this is not, not the part, yeah. central extensions and characteristic field. And for these things, I really don't know. Um, so there is a theorem which I prove uh, describing, I think that was uh, in 99. Um, so suppose uh, there is a linear function psilon on L such that the stabilizer is a torus. Oh, sorry, it's torus. In the sense of this uh, definition, so it consists of uh, semi simple elements. Then, uh, well, we have automatically, if this holds, then uh, um, psi belongs to W. So this means that psi is regular. The regular function. So you said this, this definition of toral implies that 
<laughs> the device <laughs> that H is a billion and I would add consists of semi simple elements, which I did not define because the definition is self important. And consists of semi simple elements. Of course, if, if the base field is, uh, is not algebraically closed, the base field will actually fail. For instance, if you have an, an isotropically algebra, then, uh, then it is total in the sense of this definition. But, it, but the issue is more complicated to us that, that the, the adjoint action is semi simple. Uh, it's one of the if, uh, if the center is zero, then it's the same. Ah. Yeah. But uh, well, the definition of uh, uh, of semi-simple elements in this theory means that uh, F belongs to the restricted subalgebra generated by X to the T. So, well, it belongs to the span of uh, to the span of X to the GI where I is bigger than equal to one. If that happens, we say that X is P semi-simple. And this implies that other X is semi -simple. So suppose uh, that there is such a function, then uh, from the fact that it is a stabilizer store, a total implies that it has dimension equal to index, first of all, and, uh, and KW1 uh, for whole. Um, and what Milner proved uh, was a bit somewhat bigger uh, statement. He assumed that. Uh, the stabilizer of psi should be self-centralizable. So it should be a Kastan subalgebra and the total. Whereas in this case, we actually allow the stabilizer to be zero generically. Zero is also total, but it's not a Kastan So uh, let me tell you the first uh, unknown case of this conjecture, which is already very hard. Um, so one example that is worth mentioning. So let, let us look at uh, a truncated polynomial in uh, of three in three variables. So we take k, x, y, z, the polynomial algebra in three variables, and we factor out the ideal generated by this power. So in characteristic P, this, this Lie algebra uh, uh, has lots of derivations, but we still have partial derivatives available. And then uh, we define W3 to be uh, a derivation algebra of the plane. And this is a simple uh, Lie algebra of dimension, uh, of dimension 3 P. -P. So, well, if P is 2, then it's just 24. Uh, but still, we, we don't know where the conjecture is holds uh, uh, in this case. So k bar is, uh, is completely open. And in fact, Scraven thinks that it might, it might produce a counterexample. But I have no particular fears. We just don't know. Also, the center uh, of, uh, in this case, the center uh, of W3 is completely open. outside the p side. <coughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Yes, there is one in quality which I should uh, have mentioned. And um, what one does know is that uh, for every restricted G algebra, uh, the base degree is uh, uh, is bigger than or equal to P to the index. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, yes, sorry. Uh, uh, yes, sorry. Uh, yes, bigger than or equal to P to the dimension of that minus index. And that is uh, known for any so if, uh, if the KW1 conjecture is not true, that would mean that uh, we also have unnaturally deep the reducible representation, which was somewhat hard to imagine. 
So, um, but for example, if you know irreducible representations of double Or if you know irreducible, then if well, what one needs to know, one needs to describe irreducible representations sort of generic. Uh -huh. yeah, and that would be enough. Yes. And the problem is uh, you have to induce from some subalgebra. But, uh, the inter there's a formula for inverse, but the formula for inverse also involves P in this case. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's not clear how to induce. Mm -hmm. And also this algebra doesn't fit total subalgebra. Sorry? It doesn't fit total subalgebra. Uh, W3 has a total Cartan subalgebra, but the stabilized abstract linear functions are not total in this case. They are total for W1 and W2. But this is the first case when there are lots of new potent elements in the stabilizer. The problem is L and L star are completely different in this case. I don't know, maybe I should have a break for, uh, for seven minutes, I guess. My <laughs> tradition. It's a good time. Okay, uh, so before we continue, we need to um, establish a link between these numbers that are introduced and irreducible uh, representations. Of course, if the weight field has characteristic zero and the majority of uh, irreducible representations of file will be infinite dimensional. But since our uh, algebra, developing algebra, is finite with the module over the center, then everything makes a lot of difference. So, okay, let me be a little bit of a L module. Uh, so it's not zero. Um, and then, um, well, of course, it's a module of the enveloping algebra. And then, of course, we have that V is equal to uh, U of uh, V for any, uh, for any non zero V in V. <coughs> so this implies, uh, uh, since U of L is, uh, is a finite module over the center, uh, so V uh, is a finitely generated result uh, module. So in fact, that's what one can say about the number of generators, at least estimated. Um, <coughs> now, uh, we, we produce uh, P to be the annihilator of, uh, of, of this module in the center. Um, the annihilator uh, of the in the center, and by <coughs> invisibility, this is a prime ideal of uh, prime ideal uh, of, of, of Z of L. And Z of L is a domain, you know. So uh, suppose it's not maximal, so suppose uh, P is not maximal. Not a maximal idea, so that can be a maximal ideal such that um, P is contained in M. Uh, then M is uh, M is not in the annihilator, and so therefore then we have M D uh, is equal to B by reducibility. So then uh, the picture is, uh, uh, so the action of, uh, uh, we have a natural action we have a natural action of, of the local ring uh, Z of Lm on, uh, on B because we allow denominators which do not belong to M, and so therefore they do not, do not belong to P. And we also have, um, and we have that M, we also have of M V, and this is the unique maximal ideal uh, in, that, uh, in this local ring. Uh, and this is still equal to E. And this contradicts Nakayama's then. So, and this contradicts uh, uh, because V is finally generated. Uh, uh, this is impossible. <coughs> so, 
So therefore, uh, uh, P is maximal, so therefore P is a maximal. Uh, so a nickelator is a maximal ideal, so then... Uh, Essentially, uh, I think just the so, so so uh, But we don't know a priori that P is the finite dimension at this point. Because we don't know how the center. But there is this uh, countable dimension. Countable dimension. Sure. There are many different ways to prove it, but one could also use Gillian's Slim, which yeah, also works exactly. in characteristic zero. Yeah. I could use Gillian's Slim. But this proof uh, is, I think, more transparent. Because yeah, to right. prove Gillian's Slim, you need to do something. Well, you need flatness, specialization, <coughs> and things. I think this proof. Uh, uh, so, um, um, what does it tell us? Uh, by Hilbert theorem, uh, uh, so P has uh, one dimension one uh, in the center. Uh, this is part by 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 Hilbert theorem on zero. Because our base field is algebraically closed. Okay. Um, <coughs> so then, uh, this implies that uh, this element in the P center x, P minus uh, x to the P power, uh, when we consider a section on, uh, on the uh, L module B, is just a scale. Uh, because we have an equilateral case uh, for dimension 1, so we can write it down as chi of x, maybe chi v of x. And we can safely erase this to the power v, p because uh, taking this power is 1 to 1 in characteristic p. So there is no ambiguity, uh, identity. And this goes for all x uh, uh, in, uh, in L. Because for every x in L, we have such an element in the p center. So therefore, uh, and then moreover, this was first observed in the paper I quoted by Cass Lyspire. And this uh, uh, is now uh, chi is, uh, is a linear function. On it. And it is called uh, the p character uh, of the, uh, it is called uh, the p character. Okay. Now, conversely, if you have any linear function, uh, well, uh, we have a representation with that uh, p character. Well, to see this, you have to introduce a family uh, of algebra. So, given uh, any linear function on L, we let i chi be the ideal two sided. Of L uh, generated by this element, Xp minus x to the P power minus chi of x uh, to the P1. And, um, and set uh, you chi of, uh, of L to be the quotient of U uh, of L by the factor by that idea. So since uh, uh, U of L is a free module of rank P to the N, then uh, the dimension of, uh, of this algebra is always equal to P to the N, where N is the uh, uh, dimension of L. But the structure uh, of, uh, of this algebra depends on, on chi. The dimension doesn't, but the structure will depend. Uh, we call uh, new power of uh, the reduced enveloping algebra of L associated with uh, this kind. So, uh, very easy, but the uh, important observation is that you can actually define this for every linear function and to get something on zero. So therefore, uh, this algebra will, will have at least one reducible module. So therefore, uh, for every uh, linear function, uh, 
function phi with a very pleasant case. Over the base field, the tension of this algebra over the base field. Yeah. Because the whole field's T center will go away when you factor out. All these elements, x t minus x with this bar, uh, will become scalars in this thing. And so what, what will remain is just this three generators. This follows from our uh, TW thing. Uh, so every time occurs as a as a and also uh, another important thing that uh, if uh, uh, if G is say an automorphic group of uh, of this L which respects uh, the this part, so we take uh, uh, it may happen that so for instance L is a billion, but the piece power is such that this group will define. For instance, if you take the power. So not all automorphism will automatically respect this, but in many interesting cases, it will be very deep. For instance, for the algebras of reduction. So if this, uh, if this group, then uh, and one can also share that uh, X of G pi, well, this group will also act on, on L star via co-joint action of some kind. So then this is equal to G of uh, so, um, so this implies that uh, um, the G pi is a to the U pi. And therefore, we just need to uh, find canonical representatives for all G orbits. That's one else now. If that is possible. For SL2, for example, it reduces the problem uh, very quickly to essentially just three cases. Yes, uh, so uh, uh, we get a family. Uh, uh, the nice family of algebra is uh, U chi of L, where chi is a nice star. So it's parameterized by, by this affine space. And then you say uh, 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 this family is genetically semi simple. Semi-simple if, uh, uh, if there is a very skillful skill subset. Um, well, W prime in L star such that uh, U chi L is, uh, is a semi-simple algebra. Uh, for every chi you can in that uh, that is still consistent. And the first question arises, well, what can one say about uh, restricted Lie algebras for which uh, this class is generically semi-simple? And the answer is, there is one uh, uh, easy answer, but uh, it's not really very illuminating. So one can prove uh, uh, by using theory of separable algebras. So for this class, the family is is generically semi simple. Uh, if and only if uh, uh, the field extension and it's a finite field extension, Q L over Q T of L. Uh, is separate. 
of course, in characteristic zero, every finite field extension is separable, which mm -hmm. means it's generated by one element, uh, which is a root of polynomial with multiple, without multiple roots, or with coefficients in here. But we are in characteristic E, and there are lots of inseparable uh, extensions. Uh, and there is one uh, partial result that I proved with uh, Scriabin. Um, some assumptions. Suppose uh, L psi is a torus, the stabilizer is a torus uh, for some, at least for one linear function on L psi. Uh, then the family is generically sensitive. Uh, we might conclude that the family is uh, generic in the semi -semi. And we conjectured uh, that the converse is, is also true. So, conjecture. Um, so, the family is uh, is generic in the semi -semi, but we can only, so we prove one direction for that. If and only you have size the torus is total for some for some size. And, that and uh, very recently Scraven proved this for solo yeah. already in this case it's difficult. But can you prove that in this case the extension is uh, separable? Uh, yes, in this case if you have this uh, property the extension is uh, separable. Uh -huh. Oh sorry. Uh, yeah, if there is a uh, total stabilized extension is mm -hmm. yeah, For example, for the algebra of reductive groups, this is the case well, for uh, uh, almost all times. Uh, yeah. first, first proved by cousin Weiss practice. What about the W is the same thing? I have no idea but, uh, in this case. But for uh, W2 and W1, uh, the family is generic resistance. I don't see it. I knew that uh, it would really help. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is generically semi simple. Is it generically simple? No, uh, if it's generically semi simple, then one can say uh, that is the number of simple modules. It's just P to the power dimension of that satellite. It has this number of simple modules, whereas all of them are of the same dimension. Mm -hmm. Sasha, in the uh -huh. definition of generically semi simple, is it enough to have one? It's enough to have one, yes. Okay. Then you have the risk of consumption. Yes, that's true. Which is a good exercise. So, um, Yeah, I guess now I, I, maybe that was part 1.6, maybe I didn't find it possible. Now I have to prove something. I, I, I'm just, uh, I will try to prove a theorem which is due to Cessant House. Uh, and it's a very old result, actually. It was proved in 1954, published in 1954. And it had a rather uh, great impact on, on the theory of the or at least on the theory of polynomial identity algebra. So um, this says that uh, uh, for any finite dimensional restricted Lie algebra, in fact, it doesn't even have to be restricted, uh, so that the center is integrally closed. Uh, in this field of fraction. Well, equivalently, uh, the Tassen House variety is normal. 
Uh, so how, how does it go? Uh, you said that it is not finitely generated. Uh, it is finitely generated. Because uh, it's a finite module over a... Uh, no, in characteristic P. So. Uh, in characteristic P, uh, this, uh, this algebra is finitely generated because it's a finite ah, right. module over P cent. I see. And P cent of this. So this one is... So uh, it's uh, it is center to this P. For the center, I mean, sorry, P. Yes. For P restricted, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, now, L is restricted. Although, for the system power stroke, it's not really required. Well, um, now, the proof is not that long, but um, well, it has to introduce some uh, notation. Um, so, um, so let out the Q of L uh, is such that it, uh, it satisfies an algebraic equation with leading coefficient 1, such that it out of the power M plus some x pi out of the power I, I runs from 0 to minus 1, to 0 for some x i uh, in in Z. So suppose, uh, well, we need to show that alpha is itself in, uh, in Z of L. Um, now, suppose the contrary, um, and then, uh, well, um, we can write it as follows, uh, A uh, over Z, and this element that we know can be taken in the p -sign. So a priori it's, uh, it's, uh, it's in here, but uh, since this is a fine extension of QP, we can take the denominator uh, in that p. So that is uh, in that p of L cross, has to be not zero cross. And A uh, in uh, U of L. Some uh, we may assume uh, uh, that um, uh, due to that, so the symbol of, uh, of this element, which is a homogeneous polynomial in, in this metric algebra, uh, has the smallest possible degree. Well, of course, the choice of that is not unique, but we may assume uh, that this has the smallest possible degree. And if that degree is zero, then we are done. Uh, and then, uh, well, there is a notion of uh, maximal order in, in the ring theory. So what system powers does is uh, introduces uh, a maximal order. So we will introduce omega to be uh, uh, an overing of inverted algebra. So we allow elements from U of L, and we uh, allow all powers of alpha. So, but since our alpha is chosen uh, in this form, that satisfies penetration with uh, reason coefficient 1, then we can say that this ring is actually a. Uh, the finite sum u of l plus u of l alpha plus u of l uh, out of the power n minus, uh, sorry, well, given z, sorry. Uh, or I should say z uh, minus 1 to z minus <coughs> So uh, now we, we, we introduce a uh, notation. So, so we write uh, z zero to be uh, z to the power n minus one. Just uh, uh, to simplify uh, notation slightly. Uh, then, uh, then we know that uh, omega. Uh, well, then we multiply it by z zero. This will be contained in. Uh,
So uh, what we're trying to show that if u of l is a maximal order, actually, uh, that means that omega has to be equal to u of l. So suppose uh, uh, the contrary, suppose omega contains u of l properly. Well, then uh, choose uh, y or choose x in uh, omega such that <coughs> Uh, this element group of uh, when I multiply x by z0, right, then the result is going to be mu of l, and then I can take symbol of this thing. So that, uh, and this will have a homogeneous polynomial on l uh, in the symmetric <coughs> and so such that this has the smallest possible degree. The smallest uh, possible degree. Uh, and then we choose, uh, uh, and we also require that x does not belong to u of l. So we can find such an element, uh, and uh, if you reach a contradiction at some point, that will imply that we have equality here, so there's no such element to this, and then we are done. Then we are done. So, um, uh, what, what then the next uh, bit of the argument uh, is to use the fact that omega actually is an algebra. So omega is an algebra. And this implies that x to the power n belongs to omega for all n. Well, I will only need uh, n very big, actually. But actually, it's true for all n. Uh, then, uh, now this actually means that uh, x to the n is equal to uh, uh, 1 over z0 yn or some yn in u of n. In u of n. Because uh, that's what we have uh, in omega. <coughs> Here's the symbol of this element, so we erase it uh, to the power n. We erase this to the power n, and then this will go into the z0 to the n, x uh, to the n, and that is equal to z0 to the power n minus 1 y. So the degree will drop, but just uh, a little bit. That's a key point here. Uh, and now we, uh, of course, we know that uh, the we can pass to the corresponding graded algebra. We can pass to the corresponding graded algebra. <coughs> uh, we use uh, this property of passing to the corresponding graded algebra, and this will be of the square uh, by zero to the n minus one. I think that's all uh, preparation uh, one, one required. So this is a, a key observation here. Uh, uh, this is true for all n uh, sufficient to large. Now we use the fact that uh, uh, S of L is a unique factorization domain. Uh, so this proof uh, requires some some, uh, some results on the corresponding graded algebra. Therefore, it's not so easy to generalize it to a larger class of Mercedian rings. So uh, then we can write, uh, uh, we can decompose this as of uh, z zero into uh, the products of, of powers of primes.
So we can write uh, where is that zero, which is just an element in symmetric algebra of some positive <coughs> three. So I get the P1 to the power A1, PS to the power AS. Well, PI are primes. And AI are bigger than zero. Some natural number. Okay, and then uh, this formula, or maybe I should call it start, uh, and star will uh, imply uh, that uh, pi will divide, or pi will divide uh, the z divides. For all I. So we use uniqueness uh, for prime uh, factorization, maybe at some point. Uh, now, uh, then, uh, since you know it, we can write down uh, where uh, z0 x, we can write it down as follows. So p1 to the power p1, p to the power ps. Q, where Q is co-prime, is co-prime to, to the PI. You can write it down uh, like this. And now, uh, so what can we uh, then uh, deduce from star? We can look at star again, because we, we have to erase this uh, to the power n in this case, and then uh, we, on the right hand side, we erase to the power n minus 1. So we have n minus 1 pi should be less than or equal to the r. Less than or equal to the r. By uniqueness of prime uh, factorization, so for all n. And for, for all n sufficient to know. Well, we can rewrite it slightly so, uh, so that the left hand side involves n, but the right hand side does not involve n. So we have uh, n, oh sorry, less than or equal to n here. No, the same. Because we raise this to the power n. So we have uh, n ai minus bi is less than or equal to ai. Let's uh, rewrite, rewrite it like this. Now, since this holds for all n, uh, sufficiently large, uh, from this uh, it follows that uh, AI is, uh, is less than or equal to here. So otherwise, uh, if that would be possible, then we could take N big enough and that would overpower the thing. And then the inequality would break down. So, the point is that this true holds for all n, that it's too big. We don't know what they are is, but uh, if this difference is positive, then this that will be very positive and so compared And then, uh, so since this holds for all i, uh, and we may conclude that uh, uh, good Z0 actually divides uh, good of uh, um, Z0X. Remember, this X does not belong to U of L. It belongs to omega, but not to U of L. Still, we have this property. Now we go to, uh, now we go to U of L. Uh, so when, when we go to your file, uh, <coughs> and we see that there exists uh, y now in your file, such that, uh, uh, such that uh, uh, this x0 plus <coughs> minus x y a smaller filtration degree, a smaller filtration degree.
So uh, out here we really use the fact that this, uh, since this holds and we can find some virtual by such as the product of this, this, this will be virtual there, and then we could take the appropriate element uh, in the enveloping algebra to, to ensure that this comes as well. Okay, what does it tell us? Well, but it tells that um, we have that x minus y. It still belongs to omega because omega contains u of l. And um, itself, it does not belong to u of l because x does not belong to u of l. And this one is in u of l. So we still have this property. Uh, and this contradicts the choice of, of x. This con contrary, uh, contrary to the fact that Uh, that the degree of uh, uh, group Z0x is the smallest possible. Why, why is it omega? Uh, it is in omega uh, because x was in omega and y is even in U of L. And you, the whole U of L is in omega. Omega is, uh, yeah, yeah. The whole U of L is, and x was taken in omega. Um, uh, but this has the smallest possible integration. Yeah. Right, so okay, this uh, completes the proof uh, of this whole theorem. And there are various, uh, well, different variations uh, of this result, but they somehow require uh, things like that. For the corresponding gradient. So what do you really use in this proof? Specifically? Uh, we, we use, in this proof, uh, well, I mean the proof that I read. Maybe it's not the only proof. There are some other proofs, I think. Uh -huh. But they are not so easy to find. We use, uh, I think, um, the uniqueness of factorization. In the group. Yes, in the group. Yeah. <coughs> this is what we use because we really need to to ensure that if we have one decomposition uh, and then all these primes actually divide this element. And then we use uniqueness and then this will give us inequality for the degrees. Maybe there are some other problems, but, uh, but, but this uh, normality usually is hard to prove. Normality will rise. But in this case, uh, the first proof. Uniqueness of transition used where? In U? Uh, in, no, no. In, in, uh, in S of L. In the symmetric algebra. Of U, not yes, of U. Yes, in G of L, yes. Yes. Uniqueness of transition used in U. In characteristic zero, what's... Uh, in characteristic zero, uh, uh, there, there is no notion of, uh, I think, uh, of not for many, there is no chance not to move in but it, no, it is not that important. This, the characteristic zero is that of how it can be complicated. And it's not even a fine object. Yes, yes. Yes, uh, so now uh, there is a corollary uh, for that result. Um, uh, uh, how uh -huh. can it be not a fine if it's defined to be a spectrum? Uh, well, it's not, uh, by, uh, by not being a fine, I mean it's not always fine at the general. In characters, it's in the same. It's also a Nagata and some other. You can, uh, uh, you can make things work in such a way that Nagata counterexamples actually work for the algebra. And then uh, the, the combination is the fourth thing. Uh, so the corollary, uh, so the uh, system house variety is normal, and so this implies that the singular locus of uh, that uh, has co dimension, uh, has co -dimension uh, here in the 
which is a general fact about uh, norm, uh, normal variety. So the singular locus is, uh, is very important uh, for our representation theory. Um, and I should also mention one thing. Uh, so if, um, if you know the degree of, um, of the leaf field uh, over the field of fractions of the center uh, is equal to P to the 2 pm, then uh, n is the maximum dimension uh, of irreducible L modules, which we know are the old fine dimension, uh, V irreducible L modules. And so therefore, uh, this number is, is often referred to uh, as the high degree of U of L because U of L is, uh, is an affine or finitely generated polynomial identity algebra and they have and it all, also prime. And in this setting, uh, one has notion of the I degree which happens to be this number. But it can also be uh, defined in terms of uh, polynomial identities uh, which are called, uh, called which call from the algebra. So that's why uh, so uh, KW1 uh, is equivalent to, uh, to this formula, the PI degree of, uh, of U of L uh, is equal to P to the power uh, N minus index of L divided by P. And that's why I divided by 2. So um, in, in the theory of prime uh, Nasserian uh, algebras, one studies the so-called uh, Zumaia locus. Uh, and this is uh, uh, a locus uh, uh, which consists of those uh, elements in, in this variety that have for which the corresponding central reduction <coughs> has just one reducible representation of maximum possible dimension, essentially. And it's important uh, to uh, compute this, uh, this number. So here is the theorem of the major proposition, which, which is in our paper is credent, but, uh, but the main uh, uh, work was done by, by Brown and Buzo in, in, in America. So, um, so suppose, well, we have the need uh, uh, we need two assumptions. One is very unfortunate. So suppose KW1 holds uh, uh, for uh, well, well, it does hold uh, you know for a large class of algebra, but we don't know when in general. And uh, okay. and suppose L is non degenerate. So P PI degree is just the exponent, or it's P to the uh, no, it's a, it's just a dimension of simple module, which will be P n minus index divided by 2. So the dimension, uh, dimension, so it's the size of matrices that, uh, on which this algebra in, into which it embeds. So PI degree is uh, it's just dimension, maximal dimension of simple module, which is this one. It's the exponent. No, no not exponent, just P to the exponent, not the exponent itself. Uh, suppose this conjecture holds and L is uh, non singular Remember, I, I introduced this. Uh, well, uh, this means that that star minus. Yeah, sorry, but we are still confused by uh -huh. because by what is written one uh -huh. line above. Okay. Oh, so, so you have here it's n big n is equal to the pi degree of. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. here. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, P to the, P to the, oh yes, now I understand. Mm. Uh, sorry. Okay, so. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, of course. So this is a risky process. When we take out the regular linear function from our star, and this has a, a co dimension. Uh, 
So assume these two conditions. Then uh, the following uh, are equivalent. Right, so the first condition is uh, M does not it is not a singular point for the Sassenhaus variety. Now remember that Sassenhaus variety uh, consists of maximal ideals of the center. So M is not in the singular locus. And uh, the second condition is the algebra uh, U of L. Now we be doing now we taking the whole center of reduction, so we factor out M U of L, which is a two sided ideal of L. So this is isomorphic to the matrix algebra of size P to the M. Uh, and you know what M is. So, and to um, have this uh, dimension of L minus index of L divided by the um, So without uh, assuming this, uh, we can only assure uh, that we only have one uh, inclusion. Mm -hmm. There are two assumptions, but one of which is unfortunate. So suppose that KW1 conjecture holds for L, which means we know the maximum dimension of simple modules. And the second assumption, we assume that L is non-degenerate, which means... Non-degenerate, Yeah, sorry, non non singular I think you called it non-degenerate. I did call it non-degenerate. And so suppose I was uh, non degenerate, which means that uh, yes, it is. Then, uh, then you know uh, that um, M is a non singular point uh, if and only if this algebra is, is just a matrix algebra. Alternatively, this means that uh, uh, the localization is uh, is of the mind. So, two. Uh, is equivalent to the following property that uh, U of L when you tangle over Z of L uh, tangle over locally the localization of uh, this algebra is something like over the center and um, so what, what this says is that the Maya locus is, is equal to non singular uh, to a smooth locus of the center and uh, so I guess I have enough time to, to pose a problem uh, which we probably will discuss uh, later. Um, so let's consider one case where, where you can do everything just by hand. So let's consider the case when, uh, when P is bigger than 2 and L is uh, S L two. So this uh, the algebra I didn't discuss um, the algebra of so the reductive group, when groups I will do it next time. So in this case, uh, the, the algebra is still simple and there is no uh, the behavior of the uniform. Uh, then, um, first of all, this power map is, is unique because this algebra is simple when P is bigger than two. And of course, we know that E to the P is zero, and this is also F to the P. That's, uh, this power map, and we also know that h to the p is equal to h. When this equality holds, we say that h is an element is stored. So this is uh, the restricted the algebra structure because it is uniquely determined on, on the basis method. Now we also have, uh, well, this is a standard basis, so h e is equal to 2 e, uh, and h f is minus 2 f and P bracket F is equal to H. And we introduce a Casimir element C. There are, of course, different ways to write Casimir. Uh, I prefer to write it down like this. Maybe it will become clear later. For F E plus uh, H plus 1 square. So there are, uh, three, there are four elements now 
here now. Here's the center. So, and then, um, well, it's an exercise, although uh, I will uh, prove a much gen general result, uh, maybe next time. But uh, as an exercise, uh, this will do. So the center of fail is generated by these uh, elements. Uh, maybe I should introduce them. So it's set uh, X to be E to the P, because that's the center in the P center, and Y is uh, F to the P, and we say Z is uh, Z. There should not be confusion. So Z is equal to uh, H to the P minus. So this, this element generates a P center. And the whole center is generated by x, y, z. This could be proved by passing to corresponding graded algebra. But it's not actually uh, entirely mm -hmm. obvious that this, this holds. Uh, in, in the paper by Rudakov and Shaparevich, mm -hmm. this actually was posed as a conjecture. So in uh, around 1967, I think, mm -hmm. this didn't look straightforward. But now, of course, we know a lot more. So, uh, subject to one relation. And this relation may look a little bit strange at first. The relation is not obvious at first. So we take the problem of all elements in IP, uh, and then this element C, and then we subtract I squared. And uh, this is not zero, but this one is zero. For minus one is subtract four x y plus x two. Subject to one relation, so therefore, uh, um, so therefore, uh, the Poisson power variety is a hyper surface. <laughs> in a fine space A4 of well, this coordinate, say x, y, z, c. Um, so, uh, well, uh, I will leave this open for the time being. I'll, well, try to call it if you want to. But I, I would like to comment on this, on this relation. Uh, so this is a proposition. Now, why uh, this uh, this uh, is true? <coughs> well, here is uh, another good exercise for the same distance. Uh, suppose uh, uh, A is an associated algebra. Uh, such that uh, with, with, with this filtration algebra filtration which starts with uh, a zero being just a base field this, uh, this is in any characteristic a of arbitrary characteristic uh, which starts with a zero and so I'm just trying to model Envelop an algebra case, but uh, also find a W algebra case, which also has this property. Uh, uh, with a filtration such that the corresponding graded algebra uh, is isomorphic to the polynomial algebra in some variables. So you don't require the A1 in this? No, no, that's very crucial. Yes. We don't require that. Uh, and then the problem is show that, uh, well, of course, the question is uh, uh, what is uh, the Jacobson radical uh, If you have an algebra, how uh, is this filtration? Can, uh, well, it looks like it should be zero. Um, so, 
So we are uh, we, we're going to use this the answer to this exercise uh, to uh, address this question. So uh, the Q is zero. Uh, so suppose suppose that we solve this exercise that the Jacobson radical uh, of U L is zero. Uh, then uh, we need to show we need to show that uh, Q annihilates any irreducible L-mod. Because the Jacobson radical is the intersection of the kernel of irreducible representation, that would be enough. Now, uh, we have this uh, reduced enveloping algebras at our disposal, and we have a huge uh, automorphism group. So SL2 acts uh, on, uh, on L via the joint representation, and there are essentially, uh, and so we have the trace form, which is not degenerate under our assumption. So the, uh, the trace form uh, on, uh, on GL2, which is a matrix algebra. It is non degenerate when we stick to trace form. So then, up to conjugacy. Uh, up to point to see uh, the orbits, uh, the linear functions uh, there are very few. So there is, of course, there is zero, there is e comma uh, dash, and there is also lambda h. Uh, so we identify uh, linear functions with. Uh, these elements of SO2 by using this trace form. So uh, we just need to show that uh, L vanishes. Uh, yeah, there, uh, another thing I should say is that uh, this element for x y plus s square is, is, uh, is SO2 invariant. So it looks like Casimir in the symmetric algebra, except that the uh, we twisted, uh, it's inside uh, of you, uh, but anyway, so we, we use this fact that 4xy plus uh, z squared is uh, SL2 invariant, and this is a crucial observation. So we just have to look at uh, irreducible representations with, uh, with this, uh, uh, with this uh, P characters and to show that uh, the Q, Q vanishes from that. Well, we should continue next time, I guess. Because